Alright, a time for a Udir game. It's going to be a beginner's guide to Udir. I will be explaining everything in as much detail as I can. It's going to be a lower-rated game. Uh, yeah, so you are aware. Currently, this enemy, Zek, is gold 4. I just want to have that clear out there right now. And uh, yeah, uh, Udir is a pretty straightforward champion. Very strong champion as well. I would highly recommend picking him up uh, for you know, a champ to climb with. For the jungle, the R build is by far the best one. Um, for top lane, Q is definitely strong as well, but in the jungle, it just lacks clear speed, which I don't really like at all. So, also, uh, I guess a relatively more difficult way of playing with here, I suppose, as well. But, yeah. Out of base, we're just hitting the fountain here. We can make sure they prep one R. You want to play around entirely around this stack system here. These two stacks are important. So pretty much every single time between abilities, you use two hits, two auto attacks. Uh, or as much as possible, at least. And your skills are pretty straightforward. Just to explain it, in, like, instead of this lap of text here, I suppose. This is, like, good single target damage. The empower is a single target awakening. Uh, then this is just a shield that gives you lifesteal as well. And, again... Awakening is an increased strength of that shield. Your E gives you movement speed, and once you hit the enemy for the first time, it CCs them, and your R does a AoE around you, as you can see, and the activation will focus the primary target you are hitting. And that's literally that simple. Now between camps, always try to prep a Q, so you can start hitting your camp with these two hits while your skills are, for the rest, off cooldown, so you can use this instantly. And then every two hits you switch. Smite the big one here. On Udir, I really like the Raptor start a lot um, because it is a nice a clean level 5 path essentially, or like a high XP path. Grab the Q again. Two hits. And because this is a single target camp, we are empowering the Q as well for the additional damage. Initially, here you're going to be taking a little bit of damage, but with your W later, you'll never have any sustain issues again. Um, Zack will never invade me either, so I don't really have to worry about that. If you want to invade an Udir, always try to do it in like his first, before he hits level 3 situation. Prep a Q going into this. Nice and easy. And we are definitely going for the full clear. This is an AoE camp, so we do two, hit, two hits here. We are two hits into an R empower. Two hits into a W for the sustain first. And then we Q again. We'll do the Grump for the better respawn first. Prep the Q up. Two hits, into two hits. Into another W, two hits. Into a Q, two hits. And then the Q you can empower after these two hits. And we are two hits. You know, consider every single time those two hits. That's all you really have to think about. And right here, you do not want to empower another ability. Because you will want to have the empower ready to either go for the gank. Or to go for the scuttle fight if the enemy jungler happens to be there. Either one is fine, but just don't use your Empowered here. Just make sure to not double-click your abilities either. Take your E on level 4, and we're just going to hit this down slowly. We see a potential gank on bot lane. We're going to smite it here. Just move up to the Ash instantly. Ghost, E. Hit the stun. Use the R. Use the Empower for the chase. Finish him off. Uh, it's not a, like necessarily single target. Zack is over here. He has 24 CS as well. I can loop in from behind on Jin, maybe get a see, like get hit, get a hit on this guy. Apparently, my bolt lane is not paying any attention, unfortunately. That is a little bit sad. Okay, uh, the thing here is with the clear I did. Uh, I do know that this is gonna spawn at four minutes, so I'm gonna have to just kind of run up there real quick right now instead of like doing recalling or anything like that, because I need to make sure that I have that set up. Here, it's just a simple matter of I want to walk through it. Oh. I don't want to get, take his cannon. I want to walk through it. I want to defend this. So I'm going to just go down there. Uh, go up here, sorry. The bot lane gank was just free because the Ash was just about the ward. Uh, they were kind of pushed up slightly. So that's why we go for it. You do have to consider the bot lane situation there quite a bit. Because if you don't like instantly go up and defend your topside half. If you start Raptors because it spawns at 4 minutes. It could get stolen away from you. So definitely make sure if you're going to go for that bot lane gank. Instead of going for the mid lane gank here to transition into your raptors then you want to make sure you kind of keep an eye out for it and are aware that the enemy jungler might take it but the gank better be worth it if that makes sense all right zach is currently mid is he gonna go for the void grubs i do have uh, 1700 gold so i'd rather back right now instead of instantly sending the 
void grubs. I'm just gonna buy the boots and the haunting guys, and we're just gonna run over to it. Oh, he is, he is just chilling over there. Beautiful. That's gonna be a Zack dead here completely. You kind of greeted a little bit. We just ult. Get in range of him. E here again. Get the stun. And then we just simply finish him off. R and power for the finish. And Yasuo had to come back to take the kill. Okay, fair enough, mate. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna hit this real quick. Get this out of the way. And then I think he's gonna go bot side. We're gonna hug this to potentially avoid the ward there. Auto attack it, group them together by stepping backwards and just go for the R. Their mid laner is most likely backing and here in an AoE situation we are going to go for the R empower as much as I can at least. Make sure I auto attack that in time so I get it. Ash showed up, that is a problem. The Ash showing is definitely a problem. He is leaving, I think I should be able to stay alive relatively easily. The Ash rotating for this is... Uh, Kind of annoying, I'm not gonna lie to you. Fair enough for Ash right there. Let's just sneak past. I probably at this point can just go back. Good rotation from Ash, definitely. I don't think they will show up for it again. I'm gonna empower my W here for a bit more sustain, so I just have an extra bit of health in case that's necessary. And I'm not gonna smite this right now because the smite is gonna be the lot the next one where this might get contested and the other one wasn't gonna be getting contested anymore. Pretty good rotation from Ash there, preventing or slowing me down at the very least, you know. Um, there is a decent chance here that they're just doing dragon. Yes, it is. Okay, the trade has been made. That's fair enough. Just hope that they don't die to Zack right now. Gonna take my Raptors into the Krux here again, and then the red buff will respawn, and after that I can go potentially bot side, maybe top lane gank or something like that. I just hope they really don't die to the Zack gank. I guess Ash is is dead. Uh, definitely double dead here, right? Mm. They didn't die. Okay, not too bad, I suppose. Not too bad at all. Oh, okay, one death. Uh, two deaths, probably. They overextended. They kind of knew the... Oh, they got the Zack still. Wow, they, that was... I, I looked at that. I thought Jin just going to hit the shield, but I guess he missed every shield on Zack tank the turret for too long. So that's strangely worked out in some type of weird way there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, sure. Uh, it was pretty aggressive for my bot lane to do something like that. Because they knew Zack was bot since he recently killed Dragon. So trying to take a fight is always going to be a 3v2. And they apparently came out ahead just barely. But yeah, enemy team made some mistakes. So that definitely helped them. A lot in that situation. Going to keep a nice consistent pacing for the clear here. Oh, also another thing, uh, about 60% of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So, I mean, if you like the uh, content, the beginner series, be sure to subscribe. It is greatly appreciated and hitting the like button also helps out quite a lot. So, yeah, I was going to check the scuttle first here real quick in case it is here, which it is. Beautiful. We empower the Q for the single target damage. There's the ward there. Don't really have an interest in clearing it, to be fair. It's fine. I'm going to go do blue here. How much is my Leandri's gonna run me right now? 1700. Gonna be a little little close there. Might be able to lane gank bot lane here. That's a Zack mid. Guy's nearly full HP. I can check this guy's Raptors real quick. It's most likely not gonna be there, but otherwise I just take the mid wave for the Leandri's. It's down, that's fine. Gonna go play more this mid wave real quick so I can buy my Leandri's. Bot lane seems to be doing quite well here. That's the wrong target, sadly. All right, Raptors are respawning. I suppose I'll take those. I just need to back with 1,700 gold here, so that's kind of what I'm looking at for the Leandries. My Crux will respawn, so I'll take those, and then I can reset after, keeping in mind the one minute here for the Void Grubs. Ferris has three kills. That's pretty strong. I have a smite, so I might as well use it. There we go. Beautiful. Max your W second. You get the Leandris. It's going to be a big damage upgrade for me. 55 seconds on the Void Grubs. Uh, my bot side camps should be re respawning relatively soon as well. So I can probably just do like both bot side camps. 
here in a bit and then get to the void grubs most likely yeah i mean yeah yeah it should be enough time i mean, this is also gonna spawn i think i might just have to do wolves just wolves here to make it for the scuttle and the void grubs in time so i might just do that here leave my grump up 22 seconds yeah that's what i'm gonna do i think the grump will be a little bit little bit too long there and it'll be on the other side of the map as well Take a mid wave since Yasuo went top lane here, so just claim, claim this real quick so it pushes out or resets to like the center at least. What is this Ash doing? Single target, so we're just gonna quickly burst him out. Zack saved his life. Zack heavily saved his life. I might even be straight up dead here. I could just be able to run. Just make sure like you can just use your abilities and make sure you sprint away. Use your E as much as possible. Okay, that was a almost a decent bait. Nearly fell for it, apparently. I probably lose some Void Grubs off that one, though. Especially since, I mean, I obviously lost that scenario. But also, their support's rotating again. So, I feel like I don't really have a choice here. I can't really go for the Void Grubs. I'm gonna have to give them, unfortunately. Uh, I know his Raptors have to be up in this case. Based on him being in that exact spot he was just at. And now him walking towards top. So, I'm just gonna check his bot side cams. And I think I'm just gonna go for the Dragon on spawn on this instance. So I will not be able to do anything about the other Void Grubs right now, due to support difference, essentially. Like, the numbers advantage there from the support is quite big. Being at the Rift, or at the Void Grubs, when it spawns. He has never done Krugs in his life. Okay, interesting. This was still a level 1 camp. I really just have no bot lane, do I? Jesus Christ, Varus, can you just walk up and ult him, please? Okay, god, that's rough. I'm getting slowed quite a bit. I'm actually gonna go for these because uh, the swiftness boots actually is very nice against like Ash and then Aurelian Soul and stuff. Gin traps as well. There's a lot there. Very interesting. I uh, seem to be getting abandoned by my bot lane there in that instance. All, all these uh, situation required there was the Varus to walk up and click ult once and it's over. Literally, that's it. He was inside, like, he just had to walk up, click ult, and it's just an insta-fight win. I walked into third range, which was just too far, I suppose. Fair enough. Uh, it's a, ma a mistake on my end. Zach's gonna be backing here. I'm just gonna rush the dragon here if I can. I accidentally empowered. That is not good. I thought it timed out, but it didn't. Hmm. Yeah, Varus not ulting that has got me a little bit worried for, like, later fight situations. Like, genuinely, because that definitely impacts, like, my overall aggression potential. Single target Q and power into the R. We have good damage. Zach recently recalled, so I should be able to just take this, which I can. Swiftness boots kind of deny Ash a lot, but I can't over-aggress because Zach's most likely going to be in the area here as well. So I'm going to have to respect since both of my bot laners are in base. And my entire jungle is up right now, so I'll just go for that instead. Gonna have to play it a little bit slow here. Get all my camps. Okay, it's dead. It's fine. It's, oh, it's a one for one, that's fine. Uh, after all the nine seconds, I could just finish my topside camps first, though. Because this is worth a lot. Rift Herald, not so much. Not, not worth that much these days. I'll definitely go for it, but I'll clean, I'll clean the rest of my camps first. There's decent ults that Zack is bot lane here. There it is. Should have probably pinged him for that one. I say it and he's instantly there, you know. I'll be taking my Krugs into the Rift Herald, which is fine. I'm actually considering taking my Krugs into his top side over the Rift Herald, to be honest. I can take the Rift Herald later. I'll go for his top side here. I didn't hit the small one. I know it's up, so I'm gonna take his experience. This is worth way more than, his, than the Rift Herald is. So we are doing this absolutely. I'll take the Rift Herald when I can, and later on it's not a problem. Uh, Ash's Hawkshot is kind of annoying, because I already know Ash is gonna show up for this. There is Ash. I just now need my Senna to not be blind as hell, please. That'd be greatly appreciated. Oh my god, can you just like not AFK bot lane, please? I really need my support to like, do something here. Goes to him. Uh, stun him there. Nope. I should be fine here with my Urgot. Gonna go for the squishy Ash first. 
Missed his ultimate, okay. I'm gonna have to walk out of this one. Yeah, Senna has kind of bolt. Ash is rotating pretty well. This is good play from Ash. I'm obviously not gonna stick around, Urgot. You also missed your ult. Like, what do you want, mate? Tell me. Ooh, big chase. I'm just gonna run through two turrets then. It's fine. I'm gonna lose Rift Herald here. That's okay. Ash rotated once again. I'll be taking his camps, though. These are mine. Thank you very much. He's probably gonna do his red buff. Uh, why? Hmm. Okay, Ash is actually scouting jungle camps well, as well. Yeah, I'll respect it. It's fine. I, I can't I can't have any trust in my Varus either. Oh. You just... I'm just so dead to send ultimate, aren't I? Oh my god, I was able to get one more ultimate off, but the Shen ultimate absolutely saved his ass. He also rushed the Zonias, which also saved his ass. Either way, he would have died if he didn't have both of them. That's rough for me. At least my team rotated for this one, so that's kind of okay. I'm taking a lot of DPS magic damage. I'm definitely going to go Force of Nature first here. You can either go like Jock Show right now, or just go Force of Nature. Like, go one specific tank item that's very strong against our comp. And against this comp, Force of Nature is definitely going to be very good. There's going to be a lot of DPS magic damage. Aurelian Soul is going to hurt me otherwise a tremendous amount, and I want neither of that. And the 15% movement speed out of Force of Nature is obviously colossal, so we'll definitely be going for that. Yeah, the Shen save came in clutch there with the Zonias rush, apparently. Like, I don't know why he'd rush the Zonias, but he did. So, you know, that came in very, very clutch for him there as well to save his ass. Let's do this, move over. See if I can run up to this, maybe. Build. I have Swifties, so they should be able to run through Ash pretty pretty easily, I would say. Right, decent. Good. They over-aggressed a little on bot lane there, so I'm able to clean that up, which is beautiful. Do I lose the Rift Herald for that? Sure, I probably do, but the shutdown on Jin is worth more than the Rift Herald to me already. I don't really put va much value behind that thing at all these days. I'll take it if I can, but apart from that, meh. It's wasted so frequently as well. I don't know, not not the most worthwhile objective on the planet. All right, beautiful. We have 30 seconds on Dragon, so I should be able to finish off my clear. But Yasuo is getting engaged upon. He missed his ultimate too. That's relatively unfortunate for him right there. Top is losing his mental. Fair play. Let me just take a reset right now, before the dragon spawn, so I can buy my force of nature and then we can play for this. Varus needs to not go top lane right here. Him going top would be the biggest troll right now. Um, it's gonna get armor real quick. Another one of those will do. Because I have plenty of magic resist right now, some armor will definitely be useful. Um, yeah, against that team, I'm not even sure. I think a jock show is fine, honestly. He missed Varus ult. You have to be joking me. I'm just gonna send my ult in there for a bunch of damage. Look at that damage, by the way. Like, it's actually huge. Okay, he got interrupted, so now I can easily go for the fight. We're gonna focus the Jin first. Because this guy is the best target to go for initially. Then we focus this guy. We have no players. Shen has no more. Oh, Shen has still had ult. Oh, we were teleported earlier. That's my bad. We just run first, create distance. They can do whatever they want. Send the ult in for the AoE, so they can't walk into it. Big damage. Keep kiting, keep playing slowly. He flashed, that was no problem. We chase him. Use the plan to chase him as well. Use the R to chase here to create like the, uh, the field around you, so you can get the slow out of it. Might have to smite this if he doesn't. Okay, nice. Thank you for not doing that. Yeah. Beautiful. That fight right there, we just play it very slowly. We don't have to fully in commit to it. We just want to play it relatively slow, make off good pick targets and create enough space in between uh, to be able to tank enough damage, get our RM power back, etc. So we can uh, stall the fight out and win it. Prioritize high priority target, the ones that will do the most damage to you. As you saw, I pretty much ignored the Zac for most of that because the Zac is relatively useless damage wise. And uh, the Jin obviously is relatively fat, so we prioritize him. Instead, um, in this game, I think if I just go Randuins right now, because Randuins is pretty much the best tank item I can buy against Jin, and that will be the only armor item I'm going to need in this game, really. 
because the rest of them are basically doing magic damage. Ash will do some damage, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So just a random ones against the Jin is going to be good here. And then I could just get like a Jock Show to combine and get a bunch of like a double resistances or like get my resistances enhanced a lot. You can also just go Jock Show after Leandris. That's completely fine as well. But I think in this instance, doing it specifically for the force of nature and everything is going to be quite good. There are several ways of doing it. Like, as I said, either one option is kind of fine, really. They have Rift Herald on mid lane. I'm just going to kill my red buff first real quick. He missed it. That's quite interesting. There's still a turret here, so he can't fight me. If they fight me, they get turret aggro and they would die. He's going to stay on top of this guy. Focus him down. Go for the next priority target, which is the Aurelion Soul. Get the stun on him. Use my Empower W as soon as... Actually, I'm going to ult here. Because that's big damage. Stun the guy. Stun him. Move it over. Move it along. Get moving, guys. Stun this guy. Boom, dead. All right, beautiful. Tanky, survive, easy game, easy life. And we just send the Baron. That is the power of Udyr right there. Also, building good tank items is a clear showing of power right there. If you build good tank items, you can do stuff like that into like a very early game situation. If you build bad tank items or build like the wrong tank items, then you're gonna suffer a bit more. I'm not gonna have Smite for this, but it shouldn't be a problem. Because the rest of the team is dead and Chen shouldn't be able to take this from me. This is good though, beautiful stuff. I'll be taking my um, my Raptors here real quick and then we'll take a reset after these. Go to the bot side of the map when the blue is respawning. Make sure to pick up that small objective for my team. Get the Randuins and then at this point, we're just gonna go for the Jock Show. We're gonna play it relatively safe. I could go for a Rift Maker right there, but I'm just gonna make Rift Maker my last item in this build for additional damage. Play for the survivability first. Just the Leandris is already plenty of damage, as you see. Like, I'm not struggling on damage whatsoever. Uh, so, just more than enough already. But uh, I'll go for the Rift Maker as a last item, probably, because I have some extra room for some extra survivability. We have a Baron. I see my entire team mid, so I'm just going to go bot lane, push this out real quick. I'm going to leave the blue for now. It's fine. I need to get a little bit of tempo because my team is fully stacking mid lane. If I wait for the blue respawn, it's going to be too slow, so I don't want to be doing that. I'll just quickly get this cleared, and then we move for the bot turret fast. So we have additional pressure here. There is a red buff there. That one of my teammates can take. The entire team will get it. I'm just going to start hitting bot turret. We can empower the turret as well for the attack speed, basically. That's pretty much why I'm doing it. Because the empower Q gives you additional attack speed. This turret's worth 700 gold, so I'll finish it off before rotating. Also getting my form back up here, and no can just move here now. Should be no problem. Send the R in here. Stun. Gonna have to ghost now. I just run away. Just Udyr things. It's fine. My entire team got like kind of owned there. It seems. Couldn't really do that one by myself. One v five with a Shen there is gonna be a little bit too much, I think. I'll have a back here in a second. I still got the bolt turret for seven hundred gold, so I got a lot there. Is he going to try to last hit this? He is, so I'm going to have to smite it, unfortunately. Fair enough. Get the Jock Show on this back. Beautiful. And then we're just going to go for Rift Maker damage at the last item here. The one for one. I'll take the Dragon here in 40 seconds. It's going to walk forward into, into Zed's, uh, Zach's jungle here, sorry. See if we can take any of this. We want to play for the Dragon as well. So we're gonna, definitely going to be bot side. He can be whatever he wants. I'm just going to go for the Jin. Are you, like, serious? I'm getting such heavily CC'd right there. Jesus Christ. All right. Fair enough. And there is good. And that is fine. And then we go Dragon. I'm getting CC'd a lot, but it still doesn't matter because I'm still plenty tanky. There's nothing they can really do against me. Kind of the life of Udyr, really. That was some pretty nasty C CC, though. Could uh, potentially go for the Mercs instead of going for these boots. Switch them out. You see, is a little bit more significant than I initially expected. So I think that might be a good shot, what I'm just going to go do right now. So I'll get rid of these boots and I'll go for the Mercs. Just to have a little bit more CC reduction. Also, some magic resistors is not too bad, I suppose, but... <clears throat> 
The CCC reduction is good. We're going to wait for the Emptome here. Going for the Rift Maker as my last item should be fine. Beautiful. Use the portals to get onto the, their side of the map as quickly as possible. Looking to push this top turret here, really. For that additional, like for the another 700 gold it provides. Kind of what I'm just kind of running for here right now. I can just quickly get here, get this top turret at 700 gold to me. Seems like my team is in a bit of trouble. Hmm. It's probably already too late. Should be able to just tank this turret out, no problem. Like, I just wait for the wave to get here, but like, I can just tank it for a little bit to get, make sure I can keep hitting it. Keep some pressure here on the sideline. There's the Shen, that's no problem. Mm, okay. I'll be relatively respectful right now. I'm in very big trouble at the moment. Run down. Shield myself again, run up. Use my RM power to slow them there and just run out to this side. Yeah, I'm pretty tough to kill for them. Uh, in that situation, it's just a little bit of movement, stuff like that is fine. The RM power is very, very strong to get them off you. I'm going to W in power here to heal myself nearly to full HP. So I can sustain myself a bit. There's the Ash. We just go for her. Uh, this guy's lost his mental, I think. I don't know what this is. Who takes the kill? Fine, whatever. At this point, I should just take the red buff. Accidentally empowered. Whoops. We can Baron in like 40 seconds. It takes a lot for them to kill me. So that's an interesting one. If I have Rift Maker, it's going to be even more disgusting, but... 29 seconds on Baron. Kind of the main thing I'm really looking for at the moment. Team's going, going full engage mode, though. I have to walk up here real quick. Let's take a peep. Let's block these gin shots real quick as well. Send the ult. Stun. W. Walk back. Gotta respect his damage a little bit. So we want to just go for the Baron. Like, me stalling is also very just just very good there because the Yasuo is obviously pushing bots, so I can easily stall and have no problems there. W and power for a bit of healing. I focus on getting the blue down real quick. Beautiful, and then we go Baron. They all went for Yasuo now, so we can just do this as well. Q and power for damage, and I'm, like, healthy enough for this to be fine. Just make sure to, like, switch as frequently as you can. Can easily tank that. He should not be standing in the beam there. It's taking him a lot of damage. One minute forty on the dragon. Beautiful. I am four hundred gold removed from Riftmaker, which is a big item to get for damage. I'll just be taking some waves or whatever. Finish that off. See if I can take his bot side camps. I want to really pray for a good amount of pressure here. Oh, this guy has really given up, eh? Okay. Sure. Seems like Ash completely threw in the towel. I want to get his red buff here. I'm assuming Urgle's going to take the blue buff anyway. I'll take the reset right now, right before the dragon, so I can buy my last item in this build. Which is fine. It's going to be nice and strong. And then we go for the last fight here. Let's go for the dragon, take the soul. As you can see, Urgot's obviously taking the blue. Don't really need the blue, he can have it, I guess. I mean, I'm obviously going to get it, but like the XP slash gold from it is at this point slightly wasted on me. Uh, because I obviously am quite, uh, quite fat at the moment. My CS is good. Can I click the portal, please? Thank you. Is there a plant here? There is not. Oh. Okay, no problems. We are fine. Can I move today, please? Can you Urgot build that guy, please? Thank you very much. Go for the Jin. He's the highest priority target for me right now. Can easily tank all of this, no problem. Throw the ult in power again. AoE situation. We'll send it. Auto attack move with a stun on top of his nose. And there we go. Beautiful. Walk straight into the enemy team. We have to worry about literally zero because we are immortal, essentially. And yeah. Urgot gets to clean it up. My ult did a tremendous amount of damage there. Luckily, you pulled the Aurelion Soul in just in time. 
He might have got the CC lock or something not to be able to do it for a while there, but yeah. Finish off the dragon and we should be able to finish off the game afterwards. My team is already pushing. I'd like to always make sure to get the uh, soul in a situation like this. It's probably not necessary. Most likely could have just ended, but it's just something I like to do as a jungler. If my team wants to just shove, that's fine. Seems like the Yasuo just ran away. Okay. Just gonna hit the turrets, finish the game. There's not much they can do against me. Golden power. Boom, boom. Hit him with the other ability. He is dead. Beautiful. 6.6k uh, damage on Leandris, which is absolutely disgusting, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of damage blocked here as well. This is it for Udigro. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to like button below. And I will see you guys in the second game, actually. So, yeah. Alright. A time for a Udir game. Gonna be a beginner's guide to Udir. I'll explain everything in as much detail as possible here. And it's gonna be the R build as well. It's the one I recommend the most. For jungle, at least. The Q build for jungle is... Just feels pretty bad, to be honest. Uh, the R build has way more clear speed potential. And yeah, that's generally just a better experience. So that's why we're building that. I think Q build's really strong, but mostly for top lane, not as much for jungle. So, yeah. Um... Uder's kit's actually pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure you play around your, like, stance here with the two hits you can see right there. So you want to get that consistently two hits. So you do two hits, use an ability, two hits, use an ability. And that's, like, the big thing that you have to remember. Apart from that, it is not that difficult. Uh, you just have to get into it a little bit. So you start off here with two hits, then another two hits, and then another two hits. And then pretty much everything dies if you start with R on this. We are starting on the Raptors. This is like actually the clear I'd recommend the most on Udyr, really. Just do a nice Raptor start. Take your Q second here. Prep the Q going into the camp. And then we just do two hits on the big one. Into an R. Into another two hits. And we smite this one as well. Because it does quite a bit of damage compared to the rest. And then here into an R again. And as you can see, pretty nice and calm. Prep the Q going into the red buff once again. You always want to make sure you prep one. Do two hits. Then on a single target we empower the Q because the empowered Q on single target will be better. The R is more uh, more value to empower against several targets. That's something to remember. And the R has a slowing field around you, right? And your Q is just direct hits like single target. Your W needs to be taken on level 3, which is going to be a shield. Uh, the Awakens are basically just an empowered version of every single skill. So that's just to remember that really. So right here, we are having the wolves, so we empower this. Do the two hits and keep switching. Make sure to throw your W in there to sustain yourself to back to full HP. And yeah, as you can see, relatively straightforward. Your E is also another skill, just gives you movement speed. Um, and once you hit the target with that, for the first time they get stunned. It just gets very straightforward. Just damage single target on Q, shield on W, uh, stun on E with additional movement speed, and your R is like AOE damage. The tricky part is, like, using it correctly. Okay, I do have a situation mid here that I could potentially go for. I do not want to use my Empowered ability here. Uh, I could have used it on Chromp earlier, but I want to not use it right now because I'd rather have it in case I'm going to go for a fight. Slightly slower than I usually should be, but we're definitely going to run mid right here. Use the Sweeping Trinket, see if he's doing something here. He's not, so he goes to press E. We click on the Yone. Don't do something stupid, Cassidin. Don't do something... Oh, come on. He had to take my kill, too. Are you kidding me? He did something stupid. I saved his ass, though. <laughs> okay. Pretty rough. Cassidin had to walk up and take my kill, which is a tad bit unfortunate. I'm not going to lie to you, but... Sure. Starting out here, I mean, we're just going to play a, a quick double Q because we need some additional heal or double W, sorry. We need some additional healing, as you saw, I healed a lot off that. We want to do our Raptors and our Krugs again before we do anything else because they will be respawning here. As you can see, they have respawned now. Uh, so we want to do this and then we can come out of base and towards the, uh, the, the Void Grubs, basically. I'm actually kind of sad I lost that kill. That would have been so nice. He even risked his life like three times for it, which is just simply not even worth it. Oh well, it is what it is. Let's take the reset. We are gonna go. We still have enough money for it, so that's really beautiful. 
And we want to go for the hunting guys here first back. If you can get that, that is literally the most ideal thing in the world. Which, with this clear, is generally affordable. Because as you see, like, I do a pretty, like, hefty clear there. And I get one assist, which getting one assist is not even that bad, right? Like, if I... And I still had enough for the hunting guys, so it's actually pretty solid. I did just use my smite on Krugs, to be fair. Which is maybe not the best idea, because now I have the potential to lose this. See if the Nocturne is here. He is not. I do have to respect the uh, Scuttle in this instance. I'm just going to use my R because it is AOE damage. The R in power there. And I think Nocturne has to be bot side here. So we should be able to just do this. Okay, there he is. That's kind of unfortunate. I'm instantly going to have to drop the other two. Which is fine. He's chasing me though. Very interesting. The chase doesn't do anything here. Like, he gets me off the Void Grubs. He never kills me. Which, I don't know what he's doing here. I'm gonna use this to not face check him. And he's obviously going to do the other two Void Grubs. I have two negative lanes. Apparently, Garen is losing to Riven in the 1v1. Which isn't the best, obviously. And, uh, obviously, mid lane is losing. Even though he did get the kill. But, you have to remember for the Void Grubs. Uh, if you could just get one of them. You already get, like, the increased in XP value. Because your smite value for your jungle item. For the additional XP procs on one of them. And that will just give me... So, if I have one for value, that's fine. I can't contest the other ones, unfortunately. Uh, because of lack of solo laners. Simply put, both of them are pretty useless to me at the moment. Because, I mean, as I said, Garen is just losing and Cassidy is a Cassidy. Cassidy is just a completely useless early game champion as it is. So you're just going to have to kind of accept a lot of that and they just get to uh, enjoy the advantage, essentially. It is not a problem. We are just nicely keeping up with our jungle clear. Keep maxing R. Red buff will be respawning relatively soon. I think Nocturne will be 6 here as well. So he might be looking for this bot lane gank. Considering the fact that I'm also 6. So I will smite this for a little bit more speed. Because I'm assuming he's going to be running out of base relatively shortly. Uh, to potentially go bot lane. The top lane scuttle has respawn. So he might be top. My smite will be up in 23 seconds for a potential dragon. That's worth it for the Garen for sure. No, he got me. Oh, I'm so I'm so doomed. He timed. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, the exhaust is actually beautiful. Thank you. Wow, that exhaust saved my life. I trolled that super hard because I decided to uh, dub or to empower the Q, and he at that moment spell shielded. Because he spell shielded in the exact moment, I could never like get enough damage in him with the Q damage there. So it was absolutely doomed. I'm just gonna go dragon here. You can use your W to sustain. I should be able to just easily do this. And empower the Q. I would like it if my bot lane decides to not AFK the lane here. This is beautiful. And cast it in even a recall as well. Yeah, that's relatively brutal. Okay. Very interesting. They had complete prior on bot lane. I assumed they would show up. They didn't. I'm mistaken. My bad, I suppose. I generally th thought they would show, but they didn't. Fair enough, it happens. Maybe a little bit too aggressive of a dragon, but with that, that amount of bot lane prior, I thought it would be fine. Mid laner had like half HP, my bot lane had like near full HP. I thought they could show, easily get it, and no problem. Was wrong. Died for it. Sucks. Uh, Nocturne being bot does mean, most likely in this situation, that the top scuttle is up. So I will just go for that. Real quick. smite it as well we can check his raptors too oh he is here uh my entire jungle is up so we're just gonna do that instead we have one minute on void grubs which is something to potentially keep in mind we're not gonna go for the top lane gank here because of all of our camp spawning perhaps playing slightly too aggressive considering the fact that my uh mid laner is not gonna help be able to help in any situation ever as well oh well Uh, 44 seconds on Void Grubs if I even want them. I think I do. Don't really want to just give them to the enemy jungler here. But can I contest them is the real question. And the answer is probably no. Unless, like, he kills Riven right here right now. It's going to be a top ult most likely. Yep. 
You can use F keys to spot Nocturne. Right. Right. This is not great. Mid lane prior difference is also huge here. Hmm. I can't just start it. I do want to do him. I'm assuming Yone is going to walk up. He didn't. I think at this point I can probably do it because Nocturne seems to have walked down. I'm just going to try it. Send it. Get at least one of them. If not, then it is what it is. Let's smite the first one and I can smite the last one. To make it as fast as possible. I think Nocturne at this point is both sides since he walked that way. So I'll just get both of these. My smite will be up soon. That's okay for me, this. I get all of this and I can go mid lane afterwards. We see Nocturne bot lane indeed. I'm gonna pop the ghost here, see if I can run him down. Right click him real quick. Why? Watch, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, it's. I mean, it's not bad for Cassidy and if we're getting kills, don't get me wrong, but please, man, just give me one. I want the snowball as well. That's okay. Keep the farm consistent. Uh, you need to sweep here because if I face check a Nocturne and like know it at the last moment, that would not be good. Because you can you see the silhouette of the enemy champion if they are in the bush right there. You are so greedy. Nocturne Ultimate is definitely back up, mate. Please do not int. And he does have a, a Rod of Ages relatively quickly, so I guess that is okay. My next back should be pretty strong. I... Please don't tell me he's dead. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. I just didn't respect it at all and died to it again. Lovely. Okay. I'll be back in because I have a lot of money here. I uh, will be going for some steel caps against this team. Absolutely. They are super heavily auto attack based champions. So we definitely take that. I guess I have to run mid lane here, don't I? Mm. All right. I'm not in a good spot here at all. I'm definitely in a pretty bad one. Send that at him, get some good damage out of it. Decent amount. Nocturne's relatively low, but I have a complete prior difference, so there's not much I can do. Ah, oh, he took my topside camps as well. Ah, damn. I'm getting like kind of clapped here by just like lane that lane gap because he gets to do so much against me These are always pretty rough level nine good I really need you to just get rid of this guy real quick I've been doing nothing but helping him all game still complaining a good kek right there gonna wait for a good angle send it here Stun him He's gonna take my kill again. Thank God I got this one. Holy moly. Beautiful. I will be able to take Bot Scuttle here into a potential dragon. I have Leandri's finished. That is very, very good damage for me. My mid lane's backing. Can I even do this at that point? That is definitely going to be a bot lane ultimate, I would imagine. I should, in theory, have enough DPS. I'll never be able to run bot lane in time. I'm just going to take the dragon in the meantime, I think. I don't think, because the Yone should, nev should never get here in time. Nami can cut him off. Another empowered Q for single target damage. And finish it off. Close one. Nami didn't actually cut them off. Let's go for this. Nami, can you please do something? Thank you very much. That is one. That is two. Beautiful. We noted earlier on the minimap that his blue buff was respawning. So we will be taking that. We're going to be doing single target damage to this. Two hits into a Q with the single target Q, obviously. And then two hits every time. If they're dead, that's okay. Still have eight seconds on Nocturne, so I can check his Gromp. It's down, then we just leave. I, at this point, should go for this guy because he is just super, super far up into mid lane. This is just a dead Yone. There is no question asked here. Just hit him with the stun. And single target, so we just Q and power him real quick. And he obviously has the loss hit it again. <laughs> oh, man. 
I wonder how you have three kills, my guy. Oh, that's a Riven. Okay. I will have to respect Riven slightly in this instance. It was slightly. I mean, I have to throw a decent amount of respect to Riven's name right now. Oh, whoa. Riven is chasing. Ah, okay. Why Cassidy is risking his life? Like, actually, let's take the smite here. I don't see anything as usual. Nocturne ultimate. Uh, let's get the Rift Herald here, I suppose. If he's, if he's there, I might as well just take the Herald here right now. Should be completely free. Single target, so Q power again. Switch every two hits. Beautiful. That is a Rift Herald right there. He is tell. Okay, I'm just gonna go top then. I, th I wasn't gonna go for it because I saw the Yone, but Yone just teleported the mid lane instantly. I'm like, okay. He just has the kill. Okay, fair enough. Check this camp, go for the wave. If he clears the wave quickly, we can just push, which I will do. Especially after Yone already TP'd mid. Like, it's completely free to just send this Rift Herald right here. Can you hurry up and shove your wave, my guy? Like, it's not. Send the turret, kill the turret real quick. Absolutely doing this. I do not care about your question mark things. Right, just send it. He might, in theory, smite this. That would be a good choice. He doesn't do that, so that's beautiful. I get the bounce. I'm going to have to respect it here because Yone is walking. Oh, Yone went bot lane? What? Okay, this guy is trolling. He's just taking free damage at this point. If Garen is like not AFK, that would have been a death. You could still get him, like he has flesh and everything. Very interesting. I was expecting Yone to have be to have been walking top there, like I'm actually flabbergasted by that decision. Can you just go please? Like it's not that difficult, my guy. I'm just, like he doesn't even take turret act. I what am I why am I even trying that, honestly? <laughs> this is wild. The full HP Garen doesn't even want to walk at the Riven right there. I need to respect that in the future. I can't do that again. That is uh, apparently just way too greedy. That's my bad. This Garen is like, I don't know, too afraid to do anything, I suppose. I should not have walked into third range first. Because I took the uh, actually I didn't even take turret damage. Riven just bursted me out. Okay, fair enough. That's even more my bad then. I thought I took a bunch of turret damage there as well, but I guess Riven just had some significant burst. He does have five kills to be fair, so that makes sense. At this moment in time, I do have my frozen heart though. Uh, usually speaking, you just go Jock Show, but against like look at this team, man. Like just full AD, pretty much like with this guy who's not that strong, and they're fully auto attack based. So I mean, frozen heart is just a gold tier item. The uh, the steel caps as well. So he'd definitely be going for both of those. Was I worth a large shot down? I was worth a relatively large shot down, actually. It's not the best. A bit too greedy. I definitely thought we could absolutely do that, but apparently I was mistaken. A bit too overconfident, I suppose. Make sure to keep clearing my camps, though, for consistency's sake. Regardless of anything. I see the bot lane fight situation. Not the best. I should be able to just walk this way, and if he walks up, I just kill him. He's gonna go reset over there. That's free for me. Thank you very much. All you want to do here is just make sure you that they're gonna fight me. Sure, should be fine here. Actually, I say I should be fine, but I am a constant, the only AP on the enemy team. Still fine though. You saw the empower there. I simply just send it for the um, for the AOE because it's a two target fight, so we don't single target Q there. I'm pretty sure I just dive this guy now. Shield myself at the end there, no problem. Shield myself again because I'm respecting any type of burn damage. Hit twice for the healing for my W, for the empowered, and then we just switch with W here to heal a little bit more. Fortunately, wasn't able to finish him there in that instance. I cannot greet for more hits on this, because that could get me killed. The Sweeping Trinkets there helped me get in a position for the Nocturne, and then, yeah, the ult and power is just free. I should be okay here, as long as my Nami just shows up for this. Even if Yasuo doesn't, if Nami does, we should be more than fine. Put some nice aggression, get the Dragon here, we have some good advantage. Single target, so we empower the Q. 
get this real quick and we just leave because I have no interest in fighting right now. Perfect. Our topside camps are up. Nami is so dead that she walked in a very risky position. I'm going to aggress on the, this guy a little bit so Nami might have a chance. I'm going to use my R power so I can slow him for my Yasuo to get in range for him to die much easier. Which that did happen, so that's good. That is an instance where I use my ult for the utility. Still some damage, as lower damage than single target Q, but the utility slow there is pretty big, which allows Yasuo to reach much easier. I'm going to hit blue first for a little bit of gen on my um, bar here so I can get an empowered skill off. And here I'm probably going to use ult and power as well for the utility again. Stun him in it. R again. And then we just E chase and it should be free. Perfect. Yeah, a bit of the E utility slow there is actually quite valuable. That's what I use it for in certain situations. If it's like a direct 1v1, a lot of the time Q is like definitely better for damage, obviously, but the R evolve or the R empower is very, very strong, especially in 2v1s for certain utilities, because I don't want the Riven to be able to have enough movement speed to one-shot my, my Kassadin, which is definitely a realistic outcome there. Riven will never be able to kill me in that instance because I'm just way too tanky at this stage with the items I currently have. Because the last time she killed me, I didn't have my Steel Caps, nor did I have my Frozen Art, I believe, at that point. So that makes me significantly weaker, of course. But with all these armor items here, they stand no chance against me, honestly. Uh, now here, we can just see against this enemy team, it's actually um, very strong for me to build Force of Nature specifically as a resistance item right now. So I'm going to go get that next. I could technically get the Jock Show, but... I mean, to be fair, actually, this way has no Leandry, so, hmm, could consider. I would like to dive this, but I don't know if I can trust my Garen to do so, if that makes sense. This should be a dead center, that's free. What a slow. We got exhausted, sadly. I'll tank the turret then in that case. Oh, didn't tank it long enough. I mean, he doesn't ult, he doesn't ignite, he doesn't flash. Like, what What am I gonna do with this guy? <laughs> it's just... Yeah, okay. Um, no, nah, I feel like Jokshow should be enough magic resist for the entire situation. So we're just gonna go Jokshow here. And I'm relatively strong, so my next item is going to be another damage item. I could technically go Force of Nature there and get Jock Show after, because I do want a Jock Show pretty much regardless, unless it's like directly full AD or directly full AP. But in this case, this is fine. I could just get this now. It should be enough magic resist to deal with just one AP on the enemy team, since he doesn't have Leandris. If he had Leandris, I definitely would have had to go for a Force of Nature. Uh, but he doesn't, so I can easily do this, and then I'll go for another damage item, I think, because that should be no problem. Ooh. I am not going to use my empowered abilities here. Then I'm just going to kill this way and get the bot turret. Get the level up from this. Max E lost. Okay, that's a bit much. The turret's going to be a bit too much there. So that's why I don't want to really deal with that too much. That's fine. Just heal by using my W constantly. Empower my W for more healing here as well. And then we're just going to finish off this turret. Just get the turret and then we can fight afterwards. Because we don't want to fight before that. Ghost here as well. Chase him down. Use my R. Stay ahead of him here. Use the R empower. Get this utility on this guy as well. Walk at him. Garen luckily ulted this time. So we get to finish that off as well. And we should be able to get the entire turret here, no problem, for the additional 700 gold into the potential dragon spawn right there as well. For the objective, obviously. Let me check his camps real quick. There is no wolf camp here. Let's see if the scuttle is there. If the scuttle is there, I'll empower my W on it to heal a bit. I might have to react to this. I'm just going to send my ult to be able to zone for my Kassadin. So Riven doesn't get to close the distance as easily. He doesn't really kill me here ever, because I'm way too tanky, so I'm fine here, I'm confident. Just go for the auto attack move with his stun, use the R power, or the R again here. Keep switching. Perfect. 
I don't. I think I'll smite it for the XP. I mean, my team gets to the entire thing anyway, and I just want the experience. Hitting level 16. Really annoying, really annoying stuff. Because that's my level 16 right there. That thing. Level 16 is actually like big. If they would fight, you know, being level 16 in the fight itself is a pretty significant difference. But it's okay. Uh, we have a Baron on the map, but the enemy team is currently in a position to potentially react to it. I want to just clean out the rest of my bot side camps before I do anything towards that Baron. And that way I can be a little bit stronger with like another haunting guys. My team is just sending it? No, 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 no. What is, what is happening there? Uh, sure, go for it guys. Give the uh, Baron to the enemy team. This is not a fight I want to do. Really don't. I doesn't like. I did, I wanted to finish this thing as well, but my team just walked the Baron. Very interesting. The fight right there is not particularly great because we do have a relatively large amount of gold after winning the previous fight. We just got the objective, and they are all up again. So it's one of those where it's like it's not too bad, too good of a fight. I'd rather not, and I could just get this. I wanted to try to maybe get my item, but that was not going to happen. Get blue to the team before I do Baron. I will probably just go kill Riven. I'll smite because I have an extra smite for Baron ready anyway. Need to finish this quickly. Don't see anything here. Gunner's is dead. Okay. Don't know where Riven is going to show up from. Riven is just pushing top lane. So I guess I could just go for the Riven. My team just seems to be winning that fight anyway at this point. Riven goes for top turret. That's fine. We should easily kill her. There's no chance she can ever kill us here. Day Riven. Single target is just a Q in power, and then as you can see, she does no damage to me, so I don't have to worry about anything. If we get a little bit low, we can just empower W at the end here, potentially as well. Use your E, and then right before like you even get the reach, if you don't get the reach, you simply just E into R, that the R comes around you, and you can finish it off that way. At this point, we definitely can do a Baron. Riven is freshly dead, so it will be a 4v5 if they would even fight it at all. So I'll just send it right now. Good position on the map here, it's fine. I have plenty of damage here. I can tank it forever, so there's no issue. Okay. That poses a slight threat. That definitely poses a slight threat, because if I get locked in auto here, that's not the most ideal thing that can happen to me right now. Alright, we're flipping Baron. I got it, no worries. We can easily tank the rest of this damage, no worries. As you can see, we are pretty much immortal. And we tank everything. Take the reset here. I'll buy the item. I'll buy Riftmaker, and then I guess in this situation, just go for another armor item. Relatively high on crit, so we're just going to go randomance as well. Mm, yeah. Nice and easy. Go for randomance. Uh, this does, like, double rock solid, which obviously doesn't stack. But the crit reduction from this against the uh, Sundered Sky crit here and crit here as well with the rapid fire crits and everything. It makes sense to me to just go for this. The crit reduction is going to probably be the best version of a tank item I can currently get. And I'm already nearly immortal, as you saw right there. They kept hacking into me. They just didn't get very far. I got to just hit Baron, make sure to focus on the smite. And that should be a cleanup. I will ghost here as well. E into it. My team probably already won this fight. Yep. There you go. Um, 36 points. Wait, 3600 <laughs> damage on Leandri's there. For the rest, there's nothing interesting to see. But that is it for Udir. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you didn't, hit the like button below. And I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats for both games here. So we'll go game number one first, which will be this one. I did 40.7k damage, which is pretty much double the rest of my the entire game, essentially. I really and Soul had a good amount, though, to be fair. But yeah, my damage output on this champion is obviously very, very high, as you saw. We're alongside some sick survivability. True damage at 2300, we have objective damage at 54.7k, healing done at 28.1, 
obviously Zac has more. Damage taken at 42.6, a very good amount. We have self-mitigated at a, a, a 88k here as well. Like, I took so much damage from them, right? Like, 130k damage taken, whilst also doing 40k damage done. It's a very strong setup. 18.2k gold, which is also a significant advantage. For the Ruins, Conquer healed me for 1,574. Uh, we then obviously have the adaptive damage that you don't see right here, but still high value. Triumph for additional healing, extra gold. Tenacity CC reduction, last 10 for more damage in closer fights. 1,500 extra damage is very nice. Then we have conditioning for the extra armor and magic resist. You're pretty much always building a Jakso in an Udyr build. N like most of the time, not always. Uh, but that amplifies really well with the bonus resistances in that. So that's very good. Re uh, revitalize then for the bonus healing for 2100 and bonus shielding for 1400. And then the end game stats for game number two here. We have 26.5k damage done. Solid amount. I mean, second highest behind Yasuo is good enough for me. Uh, we have true damage at 1800 we have objective damage at 63k very good healing done 25k damage taken at the most at 36.5 another self-mitigated damage at another 67.7 so i took by far the most damage uh, once again at more than 100,000 damage taken whilst also having a respectable amount of damage myself gold earned at the most though at 15k just like consistent farming very very strong Conquer healed me for 631 in this one, but again, adaptive damage more relevant. You don't see it here. Triumph, additional health, gold, tenacity, CC reduction, lost and more fighting, uh, more damage in closer fights. Conditioning for the bonus resistances to synergize with Jakso once again and revitalize for almost 2k healing and 1100 shielding. Uh, with that being said, that is it for Udir. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to like button below. I upload daily, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.